Okay. <laughs> okay, so the trauma in me is like, I gotta pick one? <laughs> there are so many people with their own stories and philosophies. We all walk our own paths and go through different things in our lifetime. What bonds us is when we take a second to slow down and relate to others through their emotions, experiences, and wisdom. Hello everyone, my name is Esteban. My goal is for us to learn from the many lives and the many feelings of others. I will ask these people random questions which they have no prior knowledge of, with the intent of engaging their opinions and thoughts which will provide a perspective of truth and knowledge to all of us. Hi guys, I'm Crystal on Instagram as curly underscore crystal with two S's. A little bit about myself, I'm a super spiritual being who is focusing on feminine wellness through yoga, through beauty, and through holistic health. Let's start off with this one. What is the most important lesson about life that you've learned so far? Um, control and detachment. Definitely. Um, you know, a lot of the times we think about what do I want out of life? What am I manifesting? What are my next steps? And a lot of the time, well, I found for myself through experience, I always want to micromanage or control how it's going to unfold for me. And that's where I lose my magic in being present in the now. So I have to learn, I've had to learn and continuously I'm learning every day to release the control of knowing how every step is going to get me there. Because, you know, um, I think it's a famous quote. Well, it is. I just don't remember who said it, but it's not, you don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. And that has been life changing with a lot of things that I am trying to accomplish I love that one. Yeah, just take the first step. It's it's true. I'm going to just follow up with asking how do you how do you avoid controlling these things? Like what what steps got you to this point? So, uh you know, first couple of go arounds is a little bit of spiraling, definitely. You're going to overthink it. No, what do I do next? How do I and I realize, okay, what can I control right now? Right now I can control I'm going to get up in a good mood in the morning. I'm going to get this workout done. I'm going to meal prep for the day. So I make sure I feel good because if I don't feel good, I'm not going to take the steps to actively try to work on anything. So starting really, really small, really basic. I'm in the process right now of kind of starting over in regards to the control portion because sometimes you relapse and you're like, I got to start over again. And literally the way I'm starting that right now is by doing my bed when I wake up, not touching my phone for at least 45 minutes to an hour, uh, maybe some exercise, drinking two glasses of water, like brushing yep. my teeth, like yep. shower. Like I'm trying to do all that stuff to keep myself grounded. But also it really does set the tone for the day, which then sets the tone for the week, then for the month and then so forth and so forth. So absolutely. Cool. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, what has been your happiest moment in life so far? Ooh, my happiest moment in my life so far. Um, I would definitely have to say my graduation from yoga teacher training. Um, that was something tremendous for me. Uh, my whole life, I was, you know, never athletic. I fluctuated with weight my whole life. That's been one of my biggest struggles was my weight and how to maintain my weight. And when I found hot yoga, it completely changed my life because I found something that helped me with stress tremendously. And when I started it, I just did it to get over a bad breakup. I did not get into it thinking this would unfold the way that it did. And I was at teacher training and I was just so happy just to be there with everyone. And when I finally got to the end, I realized Oh my God, look, all I did was try every day. I showed up, whether I had a good class or I was strong, whether I had a really bad class where all I could do was survive that day. I, I finished this. So that showed me if I could overcome this and learn to get my health in check, everything else in my life I can control. So that was definitely one of the happy, the happiest moment in my life so far. 
Awesome. Do you feel like um, people should look for things to fulfill within themselves, sort of like your yoga training, to um, actually find some peace within themselves? Yes, I think that's crucial for everyone. And it can be, it doesn't have to be yoga. Do I encourage yoga? Absolutely. That's a part of my karma yoga. It can be reading. It can be writing, whether that's poetry or journaling. Um, that can be, if you like nature, if you like the beach, going to the beach, something that's for you. I read somewhere a while ago, I always rem remember random quotes, um, and I use them for myself. And the quote was, you need three hobbies, like one to make you money, one to keep you in shape, and one for your soul. And that last one really resonated with me. And it's like, oh, what am I doing for my soul? What is that feel good for me? So definitely everybody needs to find what makes them feel good and not let anyone interfere with that judgment from no one. That's your thing for you, that, not for them. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I think some of the stuff that I always want people to understand from these interviews, interviews and even the other interviews that I've done is it's so important for self-awareness, self-fulfillment and self-care. Yes. Yeah, it's so important. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah but it's yeah, important <laughs> it's an everyday battle some days are going to be better than others you know some days you're going to wake up you're going to feel so ready to go and rejuvenated and ambitious and you're going to get everything done and then there's going to be those really hard days where you don't even want to get out of bed where you're struggling with what you're manifesting where you're struggling with wherever things in because you know we all have that timeline that we feel everything needs to get done so when you're struggling against that timeline you really gotta slow down and i practice a lot of gratitude that has helped me tremendously i'm like okay what am i thankful for i'm thankful for my health i'm thankful for the little things my dog i'm thankful for sunshine i have my legs i can go for a walk and that has helped me overcome those really tough times. And you trick your brain when you practice gratitude and good things start to flow in because you're already feeling the feeling of fulfillment. So now the universe will just bombard you with more because you're not in a mental state of lack. You're in a state of abundance. So, and it's, it's hard, but it, it works. <laughs> no, you're right. And I'm glad you brought up the gratitude portion. Um, I feel like I was a certain type of person my whole life. And then the, I want to say from 2010 to 2020, I was a whole other person, probably worse than I was before. And then I had like my awakening, kind of my, you know, my enlightenment. And the only way I was able to start that was by starting with gratitude. Um, I remember watching a video from, I forgot his name, I think it's Vishen Lakhiani, where he has like this meditation where he takes you through, I think, six steps of gratitude or something like that. Okay. And that was like the best thing that ever happened to me because if I didn't start there, I would have never discovered meditation. I would have never discovered self-hypnosis. I would have never discovered all these tools that really allowed me to like be a better person. So... And then I sometimes when I don't feel grounded, I will spend all day literally like I'm grateful for this cup. I'm grateful for this like this. And I'm grateful like it's yeah, it's it's so powerful. It is tremendous stuff. Yeah, it is. If you could fix one thing about people in general, what would that be? Lack of empathy. Mm hmm. Elaborate, please. Um, you know, I think about like in the 60s, you know, reading about it in school and everyone was so like love and peace. And and we live in a world where society bombards us with what we should look like, where we should be at, um, what we should be experiencing, how we should be having these experiences. So now everyone's depressed, everyone's sad, everyone's not truly happy. We're fronting like we're happy, fronting for the gram, you know, for everything. And we're not really happy. So now we're projecting all day. We're angry. We're not, we don't have the space for someone else's emotions because my emotions are at the top of my cup and I'm trying to keep it in for the job, for family, for everything else. So I don't have the space to, you know what, let me put myself in their shoes or 
you don't even have to put, you don't have to know someone's story. Just maybe they had a bad day. You don't know what someone's going through. You've had terrible days and you still have to wake up and go to Walmart or go to work. And you don't want anyone to mess with you on that day. So just take a second. And if you say good morning to someone and they are a little, you know, abrupt or brash or whatever, that's them projecting. You don't need to take it with you. Leave it right there. Okay, have a good day and keep it pushing. We have to be empathetic towards each other. Everyone's suffering. You know, I'm so thankful now that mental health is so big and people are seeking help and people are seeking to talk to someone, but there's still a lot of people that don't have that safe space, that don't have anyone, any place, or don't know the tools to start to self-heal. So just for a second, understand you have no idea what someone could be experiencing that day, that year that decade, but it's also not your business. You know, um, it's, it's really sad. It really is. Um, I'm, I'm an altruistic humanitarian and I really am an empath at heart. So I'll feel someone's feelings. And if I sense that someone's off, that's, that's not for me to take with me, but it's not for me to you know, like when you see two two people arguing from far away, from afar, you don't know who the fool is. Leave them alone. Mm. Leave them alone to experience that alone. Amen. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, I'm a, I consider myself a little bit of an introvert just because I'm trying to stay away from everyone's projections and bad energy. And it's just, it's a lot, you know, like we're all going through stuff. I think... Um, the last two, three years has been crazy. And I think the next three to four are going to be even crazier. So, you know, we have a long way to go. And I think everyone can learn from minding their business, minding their energy, you know, and really just understanding that, you know, we don't need to fight every, every fight. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Yes. That was major for me. Um, you know, I have a very fiery personality and I can be very blunt And I've had to learn myself, like, you cannot stop and throw stones at every dog that barks at you. You're never going to get to where you're going. And when you're really focused, too, people are going to try to knock you off. If you're feeling really good and maybe one day someone's feeling really bad, they're watching you in your aura might upset them, might trigger them. That's not for you to take in or project back. Um... I had to really learn to stop, analyze, like assess what's going on. That's their energy. That is not mine. They're trying to mess with my secret sauce. Not today. And just out of there. Not today. You know, um, and also realizing too, sometimes if I saw that maybe someone was down, but they weren't trying to project, they were just off, I would throw in a little kindness. If you try to project, that's different. I withdraw. But if I see that you're just project a little kind, it's like, oh, I see you. You look good today, girl. Oh, that perfume. Just these little things completely change the trajectory of your day. You know what I mean? Especially in the morning. It's so true. Yep. It sure is. Um, What is, what do you consider the saddest time in your life? Okay. <laughs> okay. So the trauma in me is like, I gotta pick one. <laughs> right. I know the feeling. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the saddest time for me. The saddest time for me, I think was one of them. Okay. I'll pick one. Um, I was young, uh, 18, and I got stood up at my high school prom. And that was like huge for me because, you know, what's prom to an 18 year old? It's everything. She got the dress, you know, everything. So I got everything. I'm all dressed and he never showed up. And that triggered prior abandonment issues. Because I had to break down what it was. Why does this sting? It's not like he's my world, but I feel like it's broken my world. 
So I had a, that, that took years to break down and to assess because I couldn't get over it. I was over him, but I couldn't get over it. And I had to realize that was abandonment issues from my childhood. And even though my father and my mother were present, you know, I wasn't in a two family home. Um, I lived with my mother. They were separated. Even though he was present, I felt abandoned emotionally. So I had to do a lot of the inner work and realize it's because he just didn't show up. So that triggered prior stuff. It's the prior stuff that's not healed. Yes, this is a wound um, and it was a fresh wound, but it's not the magnitude that around that. So I really had to do a, for a lot of the times in my life, break down my abandonment issues because that's where a lot of those things stem stemmed from. Yeah, that makes sense. And then you kind of you kind of piggyback off of whatever circumstances are happening at the moment to project all that trauma that you may be holding down, right? So now, you know, at 18, I'm not really thinking, oh yeah, this is uh this is past abandonment issues. Let's tap into this. At 18, I'm like, what the hell? Um just angry and I'm just really angry. And, you know, I wasn't a projector. I always knew that I never wanted to salt other people's sauce. Never. I, I just like that was such a passion. So I would always retract, retreat, excuse me. I would always retreat back. Um, and when I know my energy is low, I'm not going to give that to other people. So, you know, at 18, it was just angry, um, feeling lost, not really feeling like I could open up at all, um, like I've said before. But then, you know, it's a lot of years of shadow work. I feel like we're afraid to do the shadow work. And shadow work is so important. Those, you know how we say, oh, let me stay busy so I don't have to think about stuff. Mm, that is, you're going to be productive. But are you? Like your brain, you're not really dealing we have to deal. I do not like when people say, get over something. You have to get through it. You have to feel those emotions. You have to sit with them. You're not going to like them, but emotions are not forever. Yoga taught me when you feel an emotion, sometimes when we do postures, you'll feel an emotion. When you feel an emotion, let it come up, marinate, try to think really quick what's triggering this and then exhale let it go it's not to sit with you forever just try to understand why this is making you feel like this because this is what will unlock the next levels for us for our person who we are our journey you guys can definitely find me at instagram and on TikTok curly underscore crystal with two s's and at plush glam by c um do not do not doubt when you know something is called for you and you'll get little signs and here's a perfect example you emailing me was everything i needed to take the next steps for what i need to do and when i say it was perfect timing it was perfect timing. So when the universe gives you an opportunity, when you want to do something and you're like, mm, I'm not ready. No, let me focus on this. Let me polish. It's throwing it to you because you're ready. Just go full faith and lighten up. If you know, we're human, lighten up, take everything with a grain of salt and do the inner work, guys. Do the inner work.